Weapons were scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are advanced. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Safe Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me tonight we have Scarecrow, who is currently nomming into dinner because he forgot to eat it before jumping on the cusp. And... Um, and Stuart. Nom, 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 nom. Who isn't eating anything? First things first, couple Not of weeks... you know of, at least. Sounds kinky. Uh, first things first, um... A couple of weeks ago, we had one of my friends on, Alyssa. Uh, she wrote a book and done quite a few cool things. Anyway, just because I'm an evil bastard, happy, bir- it. happy birthday, Alyssa. Yeah, happy the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, now on to the, the topics. Tonight, we're going to be covering uh, Battlestar Galactica. Um... Star Wars Rebels, the animated series, compared to the Clone Wars animated series, just because we can. And anime and sci-fi, which may or may not... It depends on how much time we've got left for that one. Um, So, yeah. So, anyway, first things first, we're going to kick off with our... um, Derp, my brain just died again. (laughs) Woo! Um, we're going to kick off with the Battlestar Galactica Imagine Greater thing that they posted. People often ask me what makes science fiction great. I tell them. Imagine a place where other worlds are a footstep away. It's a place where monsters roam. And wars are waged beyond the stars. It's a place where humanity shines brightest. And the end is just the beginning. It's the places, the people... The stories that make sci-fi great. Sci-fi, imagine greater. So ten years ish ago was when Battlestar Galactica first hit our screens, and Sci-Fi Channel is currently doing a um, sort of a re-airing of those episodes, uh, Sci-Fi Australia. So I figured we would take a segment of sort of sit back and look back on what was probably one of the the best sci-fi TV series of its time. Definitely top five um, of the big franchises. It, it comes... It would definitely sit up with Star Wars, up with Star Trek, up with Stargate, up with Babylon 5, and Battlestar would probably be the five big. If you blew it out to ten, there'd be Farscape and Firefly and a few others, but yeah. I would definitely rate it probably top three really i'd sit it up tv show wise it'd be up with trek and and gate um so what do you guys think of it back when it was just a young series did you watch it on dvd or did you guys uh watch it as it was airing both both i remember when when the first trailer for it came out sitting down and doing a major marathon with a friend of mine at the time of the original series and then we sat down and started watching through the new stuff as they came out week by week. Um, I loved it up until season three. <laughs> it was going great until they decided to settle on it on New Caprica. Yeah. The, okay, the, one of the things... At I which loved... point, that was just a fucking cop-out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the thing that I liked about the reimagined Battlestar Galactica was... That it was, uh, it wasn't realistic, but it was, if you know what I mean. Like it's probably there was no energy shields, there's no real energy weapons. It was effectively you plucked a battlestar, a battleship from World War Two, plonked this thing in space, and put it up against what was the equivalency of a modern day missile boat, and said, okay, what is ultimately going to be the winner in this fight? The thing that fires solid projectiles is relatively low-tech, 
or the thing that fires um, missiles. It's te- technologically, it's way more advanced. But which one is stronger? And I just love the sort of the way they did those battles was absolutely spectacular. In a lot of ways, um, like the, the, probably the defining moment for me, the thing that got because I never actually watched it live. I I missed. Battlestar Galactica Live. I think the first episode I watched live was the finale. I I played yeah. DVD catch up and just marathon the crap out of it for just to watch the finale. And in the first miniseries, when you see um, Galactica's been rearmed, they've and they're trying to escape, and they've come up with the battle strategy of how to get past the Cylons. And watching that fight and how it played out, watching Starbuck. Um, latch on to Adama's Viper and use sort of fly the thing in the most unconventional way possible. I thought that was brilliant. Really well that done. That was pure seat of the pants Sierra Hotel piloting that I'd expect more along the lines from an Ace Combat game than a space show. It's and I loved it. It exactly. sold me. Exactly. And it was it wasn't even that. It was the relative realism of the way that the, the fighters moved. Like you see in like Gate is, Gate and Trek are both very big sinners in the, the banked space flight style movement. Star Wars is just as guilty, if not more so, in, in that respect. And you see them whenever something's in space, it flies as if it's in atmosphere. Whereas the Vipers and the Cylon Raiders, you see them flip 180 degrees, can keep their initial inertia flying backwards and shoot behind them as they're still sort of going and that was the sort of thing that i really loved the only two series i know that have done something similar aren't even true sci-fi um the only other series that i know of that's done similar space flight is babylon 5 with the star furies well i haven't had i haven't been able to get a copy of babylon 5 so i can't really compare that but the only two series i know that have done similar sort of maneuvers with that is the remake of Space Battleship Yamato. The live-action movie? That was no. that was pretty cool. The live-action movie was pretty cool, but I'm talking the anime. Oh, the okay. 2199 remake. Haven't seen that. And Macross Frontier was pretty good with it. Yes, I know they're using fighter designs, but they are pretty good with using th- reaction control system thrusters instead of banking, mostly. Yeah. They bank around asteroids and stuff because that makes sense. You don't want to hit your, don't want to rip your wings off by just reaction controlling if you can bank around them. But well, see, um... but even then, you see the reaction control system thrusters on the wings flaring to bank them. It doesn't work on airfoil. Exactly, and it's done really, really well. Um, if anyone who is listening wants to comment in the chat room, we'll more than happily read those comments on the air. I just figured I'd let you know there's a couple of people in the chat room. Um, anyway. Wait, we've got more than one person? We've got two listeners. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Yay! Anyway. It's better. <laughs> anyway, one of, the, one of them is Alex, which is why I had to say happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting fallout from this. <laughs> yep. Oh, there'll be fallout. Anyway, um, back to Battlestar Galactica. There's so many really cool moments in that. Like, uh, probably my favourite moment of almost any sci-fi. Tops everything I've seen in Star Trek. Tops everything I've seen... (laughs) Tops everything I've seen in Stargate. Um, Tops everything I've seen in Star Wars. And I would probably put a top two or three list of everything i've seen in sci-fi is that is when galactica jumps into orbit on new caprica you see this ship which is not atmosphere capable appear in atmosphere and just belly flop if you're on the planet you're looking up at this thing going well this is gonna be bad and then this is gonna suck (laughs) exactly and not only that they use the key the they use the key points that are unique to that series with the jump drives. No other main sci-fi series I can think of have point-to-point style jump drives. Everybody else has linear. They've got to be moving forwards or whatnot in order to go to FTL. And this, because it's point-to-point, it can um, jump up and down. The only other series I know that has it, again, anime, full drive from Macross. Yeah. And 
watching this thing jump launched the Vipers so that now they're below the enemy ships and allowed to, and are able to give ground cover and then jumping out and back up. That, to me, is the definition of shock and awe. Of all the things I saw in that series, I think that moment there defines it as sort of what the potential of this show can be. And to me, almost everything after that, even the loss of the Pegasus later on, um, in that losing story. Pegasus was epic the way they did it. Oh yeah, that was that was spectacular. It's the same episode. It's about twenty minutes later, and the way that it sort of rocks up and saves the day and eventually inevitably sacrifices itself for the greater good was brilliant. But I still think the defining moment of Battlestar Galactica is a Battlestar belly flopping from orbit towards the surface of a planet. Put your hand up if you know anyone anyone that would do that. Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely one of those sort of take advantage of the unique scenarios. Oh yeah, random uh, note. Hi Sci-Fi Australia, hand... we see you. Hi Sci-Fi Australia. Is it bad <laughs> that my hands up at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dude, I'm, I'm sorry. I've jumped out of an airplane. Nothing scares me. Yeah. Hands. Let, let, let's all put our hands up for radio because everyone oh, can yeah. see us. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta admit, uh, my one of my favorite scenes. And is the um when the Cylons like devastate the um the co- um the colonial battle fleet? Yeah, that was just brutal, but it's so beautiful. Um, it, it, that was in the plan, wasn't it? Plan? Yes, when um yeah. Baltar, when Baltar um helped the Cylons. Yeah, yeah, and you see him. You see the um the when you you see that fleet jump in from near the colony and just surround the planet, and it's just like. Oh, this oh, is going to be bad. This is going to be really, really bad. And then they, they drop the bomb, which is not powered by any missiles. It just sort of fall, free falls from orbit. And it's like, oh, that doesn't look good. Cracks open, drops about a, about a good dozen or so plus missiles out of it. It was very reminiscent of the Horizon weapon system from um, Stargate Atlantis. But it mm. looked so much cooler. <laughs> Oh yeah, the, the uh, way that it sort of sprayed out like a shotgun blast of nukes—that's like, that's nightmare fuel. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like, oh god, no, go away, leave me alone. It's like the it's like the nuclear bomb version of um what I like to consider the what I've heard called the Robotech missile massacre. Yeah. You, oh, god. you see, you see two hundred missiles coming at you. You blink. Okay, two hundred, not so bad. Each one pops out 24 missiles. Oh, this is going to sting. <laughs> At which point you're going, oh shit, and inertia on the main ones that popped out all the mini missiles that had the actual warheads still continues on and fucks shit up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so what was your favourite part of uh, Battlestar, Dave? If there's one point that you could go back and rewatch, what would it be? The birth of the... Um, Stealth Viper. Yeah, that was cool. Um, That really showed the ingenuity of the Battlestar Galactica crew designing... I can't remember what they called the damn thing officially, but... uh, It was named after the president. Um... uh, That's a pretty crappy name for it anyway, but... I think it was. No, it wasn't. It was... I'm looking it up now, so I'll tell you. Yeah, you'll tell us. Yeah, and I love the battle scene that it leads to when they find the resurrection ship. Oh yeah, and both like Pegasus and Galactica are at each other's throats, about ready to sort of go toe to toe. And to be perfectly honest, there's no way in hell Galactica would have stood up to Pegasus full force. Um, she's just a bigger ship. She's better armed. It's just it's gonna be a bad day to be on Galactica in that scenario. Yeah, except for there's only one thing I have to say about that. The Situation with Galactica and Pegasus shows two different captains who should have been allies. Both have stared into the abyss. Yeah. The problem is one blinked when the abyss stared back. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know, but I don't think I really would have liked to have served on the Pegasus under Kane. Yeah, neither would I. Yeah. And, um, She's a little too unhinged, even for they, me. They called it the Blackbird. That's it. Yes. I'm going to an epic 
plane yeah. in history. And you've got you got the two the two Viper fleets spinning around each other with the the Galactica and Pegasus eyeing each other off, and then in jumps Starbuck after doing the scout in the Blackbird, and you just see she, from her point of view, you you just like what the hell's going on? And then oh, for crying they, out loud, guys! <laughs> they, they they both get a thing. Um, they both get a ping of where she is. Uh, the the thing that is bouncing is Dave's mic because he's using his laptop and it's a little bit dodgy. Um, his main computer died. Sorry, there was just a question to the in the chat room. I just figured I'd answer. Um, anyway, and they both get a ping on the Dreadus and the entire fleet turns and heads straight at her. And she's just like, "Oh, oh, <laughs> um, um, friendly, friendly. No, 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 no. no. We're all friends. Um." Little help? No, that's what I call the park of factor. <laughs> <laughs> that that is you scrub the inside of your suit out afterwards. No, oh, that's so, nice yeah. about it. And that also, and that episode, the next episode where they take on the, um, the resurrection ship, and you see Pegasus and Galactica fighting in tandem, just annihilating base stars and just romping the crap out of everything. It's like. Wow, this is this is what Galactica should be, and when they lost Pegasus, I felt a part of that was lost. And then they picked up a broken base star, which was sort of cool, um, but it still wasn't the same. I love Pegasus of so the the two ships. I I am biased to Pegasus. I'm sorry. It's just it's just a nicer looking ship in general. <laughs> she was the upgrade, but yeah. Well, she, she was, was also harder to maintain as well. Yeah, she was the ship of the line. She had more. She had relatively well. You can't really go more advanced weapons because they're both using projectile shells. Um, but she had relatively better armor. You could build new vipers and stuff inside her. She had the machine workshop in her that Galactica didn't. Um, and so overall, she was a very more self sufficient ship, which is why I was sort of sad when they. Um, blew her up and i know that's just a mirror of the original series where pegasus disappears in between two of the old base stars and she's presumed lost but um i'm pretty sure they meant to bring her back in sort of later series and it just didn't happen because there was only one series so sadly uh, yeah sadly only one series um curse you budget constraints curse you yeah well, the original series was shut down, if I remember correctly, because George Lucas sued them. And Yeah, because he thought it was too close to Star Wars. Yeah. And I've got to admit, they were a little too close in the original. Yeah. That, that was, it was very... Um, the original Vipers were very sort of chop-down X-Wing. The, 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 but that said, George Lucas doesn't own spaceships. If you know what I mean... That, you, you made a sci-fi movie that had spaceships. This is a TV show with a spaceship. You don't own spaceships. <laughs> so anyway, um, Stuart, what was your favourite part of Battlestar so we can ramble about that for ten minutes? <laughs> I already said my part. No, you didn't. Say it again. Yes, I did. It was when the Cylons blew everything up. That's right. Nuke the cities. Yes. Nuke everything. Yeah. Death to everyone. Actually, um, one of my other things, um, more of a ship design is that I love the um the Argus. The Argus? Which one was that again? Uh, the ex- it was the experimental uh stealth battle star. Oh, blood and chrome. Blood and chrome. In blood and yeah. chrome. Yes. Yeah. I'm sort of disappointed with what happened with blood and chrome. Um, I know it could have been so good. The original vision, I heard so much cool stuff like. There was originally meant to be a major battle between Cylon base stars and, and fully armed battle stars. And it was meant to be all 12 of the original battle stars fighting side by side in a massive epic battle against Cylon base stars. And to me, that would have been like. Oh, oh, oh. I know. That would be Nerdgasm Mark 23. But unfortunately, yeah. so if I didn't pick up on it. Yeah, you get that sometimes. Do you hear that? <laughs> yeah, the they didn't pick up on that, and they picked up on Caprica. I'll <laughs> leave Caprica alone. I actually enjoyed Caprica. <laughs> and Caprica was battle everything about Battlestar Galactica, but the Battle Stars. Yeah. Okay, true. It leads up to it, but yeah. 
<laughs> Sci-fi's like, we're not listening. <laughs> 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 oh nice <laughs> why does that not surprise me uh, uh, nor me it's okay no, I, I love blood and chrome yeah. um i'm glad that at least there was a um that at least um it got, it got a chance to live put it that way yeah as a, a, a as the um the two-hour movie back in 2013 yeah yeah and it had that i actually got that on blu-ray the other day and watched it through it's really good and i love mm. what the and the way they did it with pretty much primarily full CG was, yeah, done really well. Indeed. Um, so, I sort of wish, actually, here's a question. If, you know how there, there's talks about them doing the Battlestar Galactica movie? Uh, you have um, Jack Paglin, um, who's hired to write a script for it. Yeah, that. Um, hmm. How would you guys go about doing that? Would you favour it more towards the original original series or more towards the reimagined series? I'd say more reimagined, but with more kudos to the original. More on the ship battles that lead that would lead up to it or start it over. Yeah. So Yeah, I I agree. Have it um have it with the reimagined but have um throw back to the original. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would love them to keep the similar sort of space combat style because I love the sort of aircraft carrier battleship combo that is what it's what makes sort of Battlestar Galactica unique in the sci-fi world is that it's it's not super advanced technology. It's not the shields are running low. We need to recharge the the pulsars or whatever the weapon you decide to call the weapons, um, and it's it's just old school. Two battleships shooting the crap out of each other, and that's what I really like. Like the the scene at the very end, like the end of the last episode, well, one of the last the last big battle they had with the Cylon colony, and then Galactic is just sit, sitting there getting the ever loving crap pounded out of it. It's almost painful to watch. The old girl's gone through so much. Just why? <laughs> And then that the shot where it's sort of you could like, almost give battle you could almost give the Galactica uh, I've been I've been there I've done that and I lost the fucking t shirt yeah <laughs> shirt <laughs> exactly and it's it's like the, the final sort of shots of the Galactica and the fleet flying off towards the sun no matter how many times I've watched that no matter how many times I sort of think about it it always makes me sort of tear up every single time <laughs> yeah. so anyway that's probably about enough on sort of that (laughs) (laughs) Um, what okay Um, anyway that's probably about enough for that so we're going to jump away really quick to um, a little ad break Uh, this is just for the supporters of people who help support save sci-fi and help us do what we do so We'll be back in about a minute. We'll catch you then. What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four-day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out-of-this-world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit HawaiiCon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the earth became poison, before the companies strays, dragon smugglers, and thieves will they prevail? WWW remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. And we're back. Uh, and now we're moving on to the topic of Star Wars Rebels, the animated series, versus Star Wars The Clone Wars. And what we... And what we think of that. Um, I'm actually up to date on 
levels all the way up to episode nine so i'm quite pleased with that uh so what do you guys uh wow my brain has just absolutely died again <laughs> just, just... quick get the defibs i was just say get a sonic screwdriver but <laughs> yeah that works it's out of reach um anyway um between Star Wars so Rebels much. and Star Wars The Clone Wars, if you guys had a choice, which one would you prefer to watch and why? I hate having to say it. Even though I haven't seen Rebels yet, there's no choice for me. Rebels. I never was much of a fan of the Clone Trooper series. It just didn't sit right. They'd left the movies at a pretty good point, And suddenly we've got this whole new series whole new series set between episodes two and three to try and explain more that just doesn't explain anything yeah i was, I was sort of disappointed when um they sort of they wrote ahsoka out and they always planned on sort of bringing her back but then the whole disney lucas arts thing happened and it all went sort of sideways i think we're gonna have something with that actually yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute um and then along comes after they sort of scrub the clone wars and disney's like okay let's we'll get rid of the expanded universe there's all that stuff's gone the only thing that is canon is episodes one two three four five six seven the clone wars animated movies and series um and this new series that's coming called rebels so and along came rebels and to be honest, well, apparently Sci-Fi Australia loves it. Um, I love it. Apparently they're up to date, and they love it, and it got them back into Star Wars, so... Perfect. Uh, a lot of people... I'm willing, to, I'm willing to give it a go, because the Rebel side always just seemed that little bit better. I mean, yeah. the Empire's good and all, and they have great tech, but something just appeals to me about the Rebel side. Just It feels Australian, for crying out loud. <laughs> and we killed Stuart. <laughs> oh. yeah. You met the whole underdog um, side of things? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, see, this, I don't know what it is about Rebels, but to me, it just. It, it feels different. It doesn't sort of feel right. I, don't, I can't put it into words. I'll watch it and I enjoy it, but it does. It's, it's just me, I'm weird. I accept that. <laughs> we already know that. <laughs> Maybe we, should, maybe we should let the resident Jedi take over and yeah. dissect this apart. So, so for those who don't know, Stuart is the guy that goes to Comic Con dressed as either a Power Ranger or a Jedi. So, <laughs> when it comes to both Power Rangers and Jedi, he is our expert. So, air quotes. <laughs> he says it air quotes for radio. Um, <laughs> so, I am passing the mic over to our Star Wars expert and letting him go to town. Clone you mean Wars, Star Wars Uber Geek? Or Rebels? I'm definitely going Rebels. Rebels? Uh, yeah, I like I like the start of Clone Wars, but it dragged on too long for me. It did sort of I, go and go and go. Although and I never, never, I, I hated Ahsoka in the early seasons, but she she drew, she grew on me towards the end. Yeah, I was really sad when they um wrote her off. Yeah, but I that do, said, I, they they have hinted that she might have an appearance in, in Rebels in Rebels because I, she was never officially sort of killed in the Purge because no. she wasn't part of the Jedi Order at the time. That's that's something I heard online. I don't know how true it is. I don't know if it will happen, but that's what I heard. Well, there's a lot of rumours when it comes to Ahsoka. No. Um, I'm going to address those later because I want to yeah. take a couple of things. Anyway, just want a quick shout out. Uh, Sci-Fi Australia says it feels like a true spin-off. It isn't really relying on the trilogy, event, uh, trilogy events and characters. I think it's getting us prepared for future movies, a.k.a. Stacks of spin-offs. Spin yeah, oh. I would actually have to definitely agree with that. It does feel like it's gonna, it's setting up for lots and lots of spin-offs. Mm. Um, There's a lot of aspects in Rebels that I, I think are taken from some of the old Star Wars games. Uh, Kanan reminds me of a particular character um, called Kyle Katarn. Yeah, he, he uh, he's literally Kyle. Yeah, he looks he, looks except without acts, a beard. Just yeah. Do we? My question is, I haven't seen much of this, so I apologize for stupidity. No, that's fine. Um, you are forgiven. Yeah, I, 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 I hereby hand the stupid mantle over to from myself to yourself. 
my question is, do we have um, anyone along the lines of Wedge Antilles confirmed? Uh, I don't know. It's far, it's focusing primarily on the crew of the yeah of the what's the ship called again? The Ghost. I think so. It's the Phantom is the little one, I think. Yeah. yeah, I was watching it earlier today. You'd think I could remember like an hour ago, but <laughs> apparently too complicated. <laughs> uh, with the way your brain's working at the moment, I'd be surprised if you can remember what you ate fifteen minutes ago. I ate food fifteen minutes ago. Excellent. Okay. My point. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and it sort of focuses on the almost the training of um, the Padawan. Who's Ezra. Ezra, that's it. Um, and in the most recent episode, he finally gets his hands on his Kyber crystal, which is the, for those who are not in the know, is the crystal that powers your lightsaber. And he spends... A, a bit of time making what I at first thought was a blaster. And I was like, what the hell is that thing? And it's the most unconventional looking lightsaber you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I've seen some unconventional Gosh, ones. There's been some pretty weird ones out there. Nah, uh, yeah, this... I know this is now not considered canon. Thank you, Disney, you yes. bloody retards. <laughs> Corrin Horn's father, oh, uh, Major Horn, Made a lightsaber out of the handle of a speeder bike. Lol. Well, <laughs> put it this way. His lightsaber looks like it's got the round piece like a normal lightsaber, and then it's got almost like a, a check guard thing around the outside of it. It just it looks hilarious. And it's the sort of thing that screams merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. merchandising. <laughs> well, it suits him, though. That's the thing. Yeah, it does. Like, if you look at how, um, how different the lightsabers look in this, like, you look at the Inquisitor's lightsaber. Oh, that thing is awesome in a terrifying Xena <laughs> kind of way. Scary, scary lightsaber. It does three things. It can be used either as a single saber, a, a, uh, a staff, or a double-bladed lightsaber. Sort of like, um... Darth Maul's. Darth Maul. Wow, my brain is really not working. This is why you have me to cover you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Or the third one is that you can throw it like a like a frisbee. More, spe- I, I would preferably call it for those who spinning lived, death lived in the nineties, well, in the late eighties, fortunately, and watched the uh, Xena and saw her ah, a throwy disc. Imagine, Go to the chakra. Imagine the chakra with lightsaber blades, and it's... you're pretty close to how terrifying this thing looks. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> He just sort of, because the, the actual handle that he holds is in between the disc, he holds it perfectly still and the blades just spin around his hand. Yeah, it's it, like it you literally thought... does a full perpetual 360 motion. It's like, you thought you could chop your arms off with a lightsaber that stayed still. Let's see what this thing could do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll take, to... I'll take three. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I like Kanan's lightsabers out of all of them. Yeah, the, um, the split saber where you've got to sort of Lock and no, load. no, no, Kanan's. No, no, Kanan's. Kanan's. Like the like how his like the design of it. I mean, not oh. how you've got to pull about like the actual design of it is, yeah. is what I like. It does look quite nice because it ha- it has throwback elements. Like the um the hilt reminds me of Obi-Wan's first lightsaber because it was a thin because it was just a full uh thin before he had the curved hilt. Yeah. And then at the top of it, where the blade comes out, reminds me of a combination of Obi-Wan's and uh, Anakin's. Because yeah. it has the other uh, circle with the, I don't know what you would describe that as. <laughs> it looks like a sort of curve, like a, a curved sort of thingy, blade thing at at the top there. So it, it um, reminds you of those two. Yeah, which is why I like it. It is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and plus it's easy to ca- plus it's easy to carry around. Yeah, exactly. So Easier that... than the Ezra's. Yeah, the thing that I liked about. The Clone Wars, just getting back on the Clone Wars real quick, was that it, the jump between the end of the second, clone, uh, the end of the Clone Wars, where the Clone Wars actually started, and the start of the third movie, where the, the Revenge of the Sith. Where they're up above yeah, Coruscant in the there is, epic space battle. There is such a massive gap between the end and the start that I'm sort of glad they tried to flesh out the guts of that. Yeah, it got a bit repetitive, and 
I'm sort of disappointed. There's one of the stories they made, um, and what were those ones they uploaded called again? Pardon? The ones the, the lost episodes or whatever they were called, the ones they uploaded onto their webpage. Oh, te- te- technically they're actually called the lost episodes or, yeah. or season six, or whatever you'd like to call them. Yeah. And they're sort of semi-rendered. I've done a lot of 3D animation, so I know what a sort of a pre-render looks like. So I can easily watch that without any oh, yeah. issue with how sort of crappy it looks. And I would have really loved to have seen the story which focuses on Anakin and Obi-Wan um, done in full and full proper length story, as opposed to sort of the cut-down version they have, because it would have been really awesome to see... Um, that fleshed out because there's a lot of sort of deep side of Anakin and his interactions with Obi-Wan and about the loss of Ahsoka and all that sort of stuff. It was, it was done really, really well. And I'm disappointed that we never got to see that story fully fleshed. Mm. So, yeah. I, um, the, the reason I really like Rebels is that it gets a lot... is that it, it goes into the um actual style of... um lightsaber forms yeah it does that's pretty cool too yeah uh, um during the first time kanan and the inquisitor meet he um the inquisitor actually mentions that he's uh skilled in form three for those who don't know there are seven four seven lights seven lightsaber forms yeah quite a- seven seven full forms and about 15 uh sub forms yeah yeah and he favors this one kanan favors yeah, one of them three. form three ridiculously yeah, form three, form three, Mac- three Cerisu, Ceris- Ceris- which is the same one that Obi Wan favors. Yes, it's a defensive. It's more defensive. Yeah, and because he favors it so much, the Inquisitor just sort of tears him apart because he's like, "Yes, I've well, practiced mo- against this. This is easy. I'm not even gonna well, try." Most Sith will use form seven because it's um the only Jedi who's actually ever been able to use form seven is Mace Windu, because it's such an aggressive stance at borderline dark side. Yeah. Which is why Windu had the purple blade. Yeah. Uh, well, no, actually, that was just because Samuel Jackson no, wanted to was... spot himself. <laughs> no, they actually wrote that in as Mace Windu having the perf- the purple blade to well, signify yeah. his mastery yeah. of the set of if, Form Seven. If we're gonna go Star Wars lore, yes. If we're gonna go fun fact, it was because Samuel Jackson wanted to spot himself in Episode Two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking about that. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> Can you blame him? <laughs> now, I lost well count how many. How, well, Latin, and how many Jedi were there? At least 100, 200 odd? Yeah. But, um, it's. So, yeah, and, um. If we're gonna go back to Ahsoka, the person who they talk. Um. I can't remember the, epi- the episode. The, the friend. But the, her, it, one of her friends. Uh, yeah. and, um, the one where, um, uh, Sabine and. I forgot on the Twi'leks name now. Yeah. Well, when they get str- and when they do like the mission and they get stranded, oh, I have to... on that on that planet. Yeah, and the, the person they're talking to with the muffled voice. Yeah, I have two theories. One is either Ahsoka, or the other is Bail Organa. Ooh, could it, it not perfect... be both? Possibly, possibly. Well, it'd be the perfect way to bring Ahsoka back in. Or yeah. it'd also be a perfect way to have Bale in, because Bale was also very heavily involved with the start of the Rebellion. Yeah. As I said, theories, they're rumors, we don't know anything, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I... Hmm. <laughs> it makes you have to think about it a lot now, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, I was just... And we know how well that works for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, right now I've got... Two gears grinding against each other that aren't touching. If you can work that one out, <laughs> you know exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, we killed David this time. <laughs> we killed David. <laughs> We've killed Scarecrow. No, that was the rain this morning doing that. Uh, it's still raining in my place. Yeah. yeah, it's still raining here, but I had to walk to the Maritime Museum in the rain this morning, so. I got caught in it, and about 10 minutes after I left home on a half-hour walk, the tolerable drizzle decided to turn into a squall. Yeah, I was at work at that point, and we were talking, and then we couldn't hear each other. And we were just like, oh, okay. 
because we got we're, we're, I work in a warehouse and we've got this corrugated iron roof shed and when it pours it you just you can't hear nothing it's just white noise so anyway um i think that about does us on us okay how about this so Stuart, your you vote rebels absolutely i love rebels rebels sci-fi. i actually want to do I actually want to do a canon cosplay one there nice surprise surprise sci-fi australia votes rebels i'm assuming um david hasn't seen rebels so he has to vote clone wars by default rebels anyway <laughs> so, yep they agree that sci-fi australia definitely vote for rebels yep um so it looks like between the two rebels wins a lot of people really um love rebels especially um the, the character designs as well they really love it yeah Although I'm a little, I'm a little sad that the lightsaber blades aren't a bit bigger. Yeah. They look very, they look like sticks. Yeah. When they, when Ezra first shows his, it looked like um, a needle. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, like, why are the blades so small? Come on, guys. A lightsaber or a light foil? <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. So what would you? Okay. Stuart, you're put in charge with writing an episode of Rebels. What would you do? Ooh, um... More, I th- more oh, actually, no, I know, I don't, no, no, I know. Make it so that, um, I like, make that, make the, um, plot, um, the plot that they have to go to Camino. <laughs> Sci-Fi Australia wants Ewoks. <laughs> I want them to go to Camino, because Camino is where the clones was, or is where the cloning facility is that yeah. eventually gets shut down. So I'd love to see like a row, I am um, because during uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two the video game, uh, w- when you do play the storyline, you go, eventually goes to Empire. There's a thing that happens on Camino. Yeah. No, not a chewy Fair Christmas it. episode. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> we can't oh, get this. Drama. <laughs> Can we try and keep this serious? <laughs> Sci-Fi Australia is killing us. Woo! <laughs> Where's my second uh, plane, said, bro, guys? Ba- basically, make it go on Camino, and they restart the clones, and just like a rogue clone army against the Empire. That's what I thought. That would be pretty cool. Wouldn't make any sense compared to the movie, um, the last, the, the original trilogy, but. Well, really remember that stormtroopers are no longer clones, so yeah. So it'd be a nice little throwback. There are be. some clones still in the stormtroopers, but now they're just expendable morons. <laughs> yeah. Which clone, is troopers, cool. clone troopers actually had capabilities. <laughs> clone clone troopers could do the one thing that stormtroopers are known for doing really, really, really well. Hit their targets. Aiming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rex with two blast with two blaster pistols is scary. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, did you guys watch that video I posted to the SFF? Yeah, the um, where you see it's Darth Vader playing baseball at the stadium. <laughs> for the SFF bottom show. of the ninth, the scores are tied, and he just three, smacks it out. Trooper three three nine seven eight made the pitch, and it's a big hit from Lord Vader. And oh Ooh. god, oh. and <laughs> the victory for the rebels. <laughs> Death Star blows up, and they just sort of just stare there. They drop the bat, they're just sort of staring up the sky, going, <laughs> What have we done? <laughs> We've had a bit of precise hit to get into the, um, into the hole. So that much. Yeah. It was a shot by Vader. What else did you expect it was going to be? <laughs> I mean, come on, he, the baseball bat even got the lightsaber blade effect on it. <laughs> he swung. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. So anyway, we're just going to jump away really quickly to our last ad break, and when we come back, uh, anime that it has sci-fi themes. So this is one suggested by Scarecrow, so I'm going to let him helm it since he knows more about anime than probably me and Stuart combined. Boy! <laughs> I just love stirring it. It's just it's easy. It's just I'm low- such a weeb. We make it so easy for him. It's You've got to give it something to do. Such low-hanging fruit. Anyway, um... We'll be back in exactly a minute. 
What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why, passes to HawaiiCon, of course. The 2015 four-day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out-of-this-world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit HawaiiCon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragons, smugglers, and thieves, rule by prevail. WWW, the Star Christian, remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. back um and now i'm turning it over to the other two because they're way more into anime than me and if i deny Stuart this he'll probably stab me um where's my lightsaber where's my lightsaber anime in oh sci-fi and anime I almost said anime and sci-fi that wouldn't have made much sense <laughs> so sci-fi themed anime outside of stuff like um the mech warrior type series um uh, and yep. There goes Gundams. Yeah, it's Gundams. No, no, I'm just being outside of that. I'm just trying to think of some shows. You've got stuff like Astro Boy. Um, oh, Astro, oh, yeah, Astro Boy, uh, Evangelion. Yeah, Evangelion. Um, uh, I wish that show would just die already. And that's coming from an anime fan. Techno Man. <laughs> What's it, wrong with Evangelion? Here's a question for you. Does Log Horizon classes sci-fi or fantasy? I'm putting that firmly in s fantasy. There's some sci-fi elements to it, but it's more fantasy-based. It, it is more fantasy-based, but it takes place inside a virtual reality environment, Matrix-style. Uh, no, we well, don't that, know that it is. That's the thing. That's basically all we, what all I know is that. It's, it's all they know about Log Horizon is it's very familiar based on this game they've been playing for the past 10, 15 years. They yeah. don't know for say that they're in a virtual reality. Fair that point. just sounds like season one of um, Sword Art Online. Yeah, no, but it, it, Sword Art Online actually admits that they're putting on VR helmets. These guys were just playing a standard World of Warcraft expansion at their computers, and suddenly they're in this world. Is it bad now? I have the thing of South Park of the South Park guys playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> well, it's just, we're just gonna walk away from South Park <laughs> and just pretend that didn't happen. Um, what else we've got? We've got, um, Bodacious Space Pirates is one of the ones we watched at Anime Night. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, then we've got... That's so funny. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Space Dandy. Yeah. Alright. Uh, Trigun. Um, this is... Can't forget Trigun. Trigun. Okay, this is probably going to be a few spoilers for those of you who are members of Banff. But... Yeah. Just, just re are... re really quick, just explain to the people who are listening what Banff is, when it meets, all that sort of stuff, just so that... Alright. Banff um, is an anime group that I'm one of the admins of. We meet every two weeks on a Saturday night in Dripoli Library. Um, and the name Banff is shortened for Brisbane Anime and Manga Federation. Now, we've just had a bit of a change up with um, some leadership policies in the last couple of days. So we are probably going to be having a whole bunch more entertaining and epic animes instead of the uh yaoi bait that we've had for the past year yay some of the stuff that we've been watching the past uh, year has just been like what the hell am i watching so yeah. I like, ni so, like Niji so, 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 so the, po the po <laughs> indra pilly shopping center in brisbane that has a library um if you go outside of the cinema into the car park follow the wall around you'll see the late hours after hours library book return there's a double door right next to that we're in there. The next one is the crap. When's the next one again? Uh, well, we have the we have a anime admin screening this weekend. I mean, when's it back for everybody? It's back on the twenty fifth. The twenty fifth. Oh, sorry, the twenty fourth. It's back on the twenty fourth for everybody. So, so, so four p.m. on the twenty fourth of January, twenty fifteen. If you're interested, if you're in Brisbane, and you want to check it out, go to Indra Philly Shopping Centre, check out, look for the after hours book returns, double door there, come inside, anyone welcome, we just sit around and watch anime for like four hours. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, we do four series, 
of we do four series of a showing two episodes per showing until we finish up we try to stick to 26 episode series so you won't get any major epic series that take ages to get through like gundam or yeah that sort of thing um i will safely say that we are currently undergoing the process to um get some shows aired like nadesco uh, majestic prince and some other ones along those lines that I'm trying to push through with the guys, which actually, now that we've lost one of the major problems, we might actually be able to get through with it without yeah. resorting to baseball bats across the face. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, back to the original topic. Anime, sci-fi, go. <laughs> okay, we're talking sci-fi with anime. It's really, really hard to not co- cover these ones you got, especially because sci-fi mostly winds up based in space. Yeah. So, top on my list for this is Space Battleship Yamato, also yeah. known if you're Star Blazers to, as Star Blazers for English listeners only. You're just dro- you're dropping in and out a little bit, uh, Scarecrow. I'm not exactly that, sure why. That's uh, probably my headset. There. Yeah. Um, other thing that might be of major note is Martian success in a desco that is funny as sin and irreverent but it is still a true sci-fi space based even if the even if the captain is a bit of an airheaded ditz yeah but there's a lot out there to to be seen and quite frankly i love sci-fi but when it comes to sci-fi available these days i find it's a better story on the animation on the animated ones than yeah. anywhere else yeah, well, one of the ones I watched recently, which was a Mecha one, um, Aldenoa Zero, uh, it's, mm. it's, it's just about to start its second season. The premise was, when we got to the moon, we found a jump gate which sent us to Mars. So we colonised Mars, and after about 10 or 15 years or so, um, war broke out between Mars and Earth, and eventually that resulted in Earth taking heavy ca- casualties, because um, the Martians discovered ancient technology which gave them the ability to make like stupidly powerful um mech suits i'm not they... we're talking stupidly powerful mech suits that i think that even some of the uh most well-known and loved and overpowered gundams of animation history would have trouble dealing with yeah and um they blew up the moon and eventually there was sort of a, a truce formed and then for only about 10 years there was peace um the what was known as the Martian Knights were in sky castles, of effectively orbiting space stations, and they were they were still spoiling for a fight. They wanted to annihilate Earth, take the planet back because they were better for whatever crazy crazy reason. And eventually, the, 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 it's a really well written story, and I don't want to sort of give away too many spoilers, but it follows this this group of um, trainee soldiers, um, so to speak. They're students for crying out loud. Not even trainee soldiers. They're just no, I know. I know, I know they're kids just... that are learning shit. Yeah, I know. They're, they're effectively students. And um, the princess from Mars comes to Earth to try and do a peace treaty. And then she gets assassinated. And the Martian knights go nuts. They come crashing down. And this main group of guys that we follow have are at a massive disadvantage technologically. They don't have anywhere near the capabilities to go one-on-one with these suits and stand a chance of not dying. So instead, they use better strategy, which is one of the... Th- boiling back to Battlestar Galactica, it's one of the things I like Battlestar Galactica was the strategy. And it's one of the things I like about Elder No Zero is the strategy they use in battles. In a lot of other sci-fis like Stargate and that, it's... Um, a straight-out slug match? Yeah, it's, it's just a straight-out slug match. No real strategy. So anyway, Sci-Fi Australia's heading off. We'll... Catch you later, I'll keep an eye on your posts, and I'll see you on Facebook. Um, have fun. Enjoy your run. Um, other th- other major ones, anime-wise. <sighs> well, sci-fi and anime has been done to the point of late. We've had a run in the last two years of sci-fi-based anime. Yeah, and some of it's been really good. We've got Bodacious Space Pirates. That for was one. weird. That was really, really weird. It was weird, but it was also fun. Yeah, and it, and it had it, its moments of strategy as well, which 
is the stuff that I like. I like the the, the thinking side of things, which is ironic okay. considering my brain really can't think words and sentences. <laughs> yeah, well, there was it had so much potential that it actually met a lot of the potential that it had, yeah. which thrilled me to bits on that one because I never I wrote it off as some oh god it's gonna be kitty it's gonna be campy and it was actually pretty good good enough to um keep me coming back yeah, yeah. um other major ones oh, we've just had a, we've just had an announcement this week from the guys who did Battlestar not Battlestar freaking Space Battleship Yamato that we have a sequel movie coming out for that one uh a sequel for the live action movie no, 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 sequel for twenty one ninety nine. Ah, yes, I just ignore me. A I'm sequel, retarded. as anime, yeah. sequel for for the series. So we're looking. I'm looking forward to that. We've also got an announcement. We've got a new Macross series coming at the end of this year. Oh, finally. Yeah, they at least take time to to build stuff up for it. Um, we've also finally, apparently, I don't know how long this one's been being knocked around and bandied about, but we might be getting a third proper, or fourth, if you want to be correct, season of Full Metal Panic. Ooh. I've heard that. I've heard that's been bouncing around a lot. Because yeah. we, we watched uh, season one and season... Did we get through season two yet at Banff? Yeah, we finished that up last... Yeah. That's right. Um, so... so we had, season one was serious. Season two was fun. Uh, yeah. That was Fafu. Season three was serious. The second raid, and now we're looking at a third serious, serious ser- season because they finally caught up with, got caught up to the manga point, and the manga has now been released to finish it off. Nice, nice. So they actually got the chain to follow now. Nice. They're not going to be stabbing in the dark, shall we say? Which results in stuff like Bleach's Bountark if yeah. they're stabbing in the dark, just trying to make money off it. Yeah, I just it's just leaving Bleach alone. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there because that needed to be said. Yeah, Bleach is low hanging fruit. It's just I sort of feel bad. I'm sorry. How long did Naruto go for? <laughs> it's still technically going, <sighs> and it's not going to stop either. Let it go. Ow! I'll bugger it. What the <laughs> hell was that? It was it my was neck and back gripple popping? Ow. Just at the mention of Naruto. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I've, 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 I've brought up Annie Chart um, just to have a look. What the hell is making all that noise? My headset creaking. Okay. So I brought up Annie Chart to see if there's anything coming um, this season that looks sci fi There's a lot of crazy stuff, but nothing that jumps out specifically as sci fi. Here's a question. Would you class Kill the Kill as sci-fi or fantasy? I wouldn't class Kill the Kill as anime. <laughs> oh, be nice. It wasn't that bad. A lot, a lot of people like Kill the Kill, so be careful what you say. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm bracing myself to be flamed there, but... Oh, I wasn't as bad as David last week with the, with the um, feminists. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I, I'm actually quite glad that Alex never listened to that episode, so that's... Okay. Oh, no, I've got one that is coming that is fantasy, that is sci-fi. Ooh. Fafner. Sokyo no, F- no Fafner. Second... Sokyo no Fafner, Dead Aggressor Exodus. Yes, I've heard of this. Three days we have a new... It starts, and it's a sequel to the Heaven and Earth movie, which was set to... Which was set immediately after the original series. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, guys, uh, that is it for the podcast. We're whoa, 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 bad music. Go quieter. That's better. So that's it for the podcast. We're heading off. Um, so twenty seconds left. David, go. Have fun, guys. Let's do it. it. Go. Bye, everyone. Bye.
and the end is just the beginning. It's the places, the people, the stories that make sci-fi great. Sci-fi. Imagine greater. Imagine greater. Imagine greater. Imagine greater. Imagine greater.